it is Halloween, it is spooky, it is Nightmare Before Christmas, and it is almost done. Hello and welcome to Mando Bug Crafts, episode 121. What's up everybody, my name's Amanda, but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug, and this is my crafty podcast where I hopefully inspire you on your making journey as I share mine. In today's podcast, I've got crochet, a little knitting talk, and crochet design, and a fun new check it out. So starting out with something I've learned. This is the part that includes knitting, and of course there will be links down below to skip around to the different segments of this video. This is the knitting talk. I think that I've shared this cowl on the podcast before. So this is a cowl that I designed using my hand spun. I got some fiber from the Paradise Fibers of the Month Club. I don't remember what month, but it came with this gorgeous Polworth blend that was white and it came with walnut powder to naturally dye it. So I naturally dyed the fiber, I spun it up, and then I knit it into this cowl and I also knit a matching hat. This cowl uses this gorgeous stitch pattern which is it can be found online I'll link it down below it is called the goals and garter stitch I found a way to imitate this in crochet now if you watch my live streams on Saturday you've already seen this this one I reviewed lion brand basic stitch premium I shared off this cowl so here is the side-by-side -side comparison they are almost identical, are they not? That is so crazy. So this is the crochet version. I'll show you up close here. It uses a combination of the waistcoat stitch and slip stitches. It's actually worked this direction, so let me show it to you this way. That probably makes a lot more sense. So I do have a tutorial that I've filmed and just needs to be edited on how to do the stitch pattern and I will also be having a full tutorial for the cowl coming out soon. That one is not filmed yet. But I experimented until I figured it out. The one thing that you do need to do though is you need to pull from the inside and outside of the ball in order to make these floats that you then later catch with your waistcoat uh, stitch. I'll show that right up close. So in order to create those floats, you're weaving an extra strand of yarn throughout your work. So I took my Lion Brand Basic Stitch Premium and I wound it up into a cake using my ball winder because I found pulling from the inside of those skeins, they just kind of collapsed and there was a lot of yarn barf going on. So it works better from cake form. And for this, I'm using a six and a half millimeter crochet hook, which is a jump up from what the yarn recommends, but waistcoat stitches tend to be pretty tight and difficult to work. So you wanna go up in hook size and work very loosely. The same thing with slip stitches, and these slip stitches are worked in the back loop, which makes it a little easier. But yeah nice and loose and it's still you still get a pretty dense fabric from it but overall it's still a very wearable warm cowl and I, I really enjoy how different this looks from other crochet cowl patterns that you've seen and I think that this stitch could be applied to a variety of situations which is why I'm going to be putting out the stitch pattern video shortly. I just have to I just have to edit it. I'll talk more about my uh, timeline when we get to let's chat at the end of the video. But yes, yeah, so this is also the only finished project that I have since I've last recorded. So <laughs> we're gonna skip right on past finished objects and work uh, talk about works in progress. There are a lot. I've been working on a lot of things lately. I I'm all over the place usually. I can't stick to just one project. So let's talk about my progress on the Nightmare Before Christmas cardigan. Oh my gosh, let me get this situated. Look at this, you guys, my Nightmare Before Christmas cardigan. It's so close. It is so close to done. It is Halloween, it is spooky, it is Nightmare Before Christmas, and it is almost 
done. So since I've last shown this on the podcast, I have sewn in the side panels. Let me see if I can hold it. Okay, can you see this is the arm? This is the side panel under the arm. This I'm gonna lose it. So this, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, so here's what the cardigan looks like so far seamed. We're just missing ribbing. So I made the side panels and I've sewn them in. So we can start with Sally's side. It's easier to show you the side panels wearing it. So I had shown that I left a gap under my sleeve here to sew in a side panel. So here's Sally's side panel. And then here is Jack's side panel, which is a lot it's easier to see more clearly since it is in solid black. It does disrupt the stripes, but the sleeve is disrupting anyways. So I feel like it all works together. And let me go ahead and show you the back anyways. And so here is the back of the cardigan. I am so excited about this cardigan. So excited. And since I've last showed off this cardigan, I've also put the ribbing on the sleeves. So I just did applied slip stitch ribbing and it's nice and stretchy and gorgeous. I love the way this turned out. I love how this looks like. It's like super Frankenstein vibes. I love this cardigan so much. The only thing is I think I went a little extra on my armhole depth. I don't think I needed to make my upper arm circumference that big, but it's fine. It's just a little bat wingy is all, but it's not uncomfortable and it doesn't look horrible. So I started ribbing around the bottom. Let me show you that. I've started the applied slip stitch ribbing across the bottom and I left off about halfway into the back. You can see there's my stitch marker with my live loop. So you just kind of work back and forth in rows, attaching your ribbing to the edge of your work as you go. And it's almost like two inches of ribbing that I'm doing here. And once I've got all the way across the bottom, I can then start the ribbing around the front, uh, around the neck and the other side of the front. So let me show you here. So this one has the ribbing, this one does not. Once it's on there, then I'll start working the ribbing around the front pieces and then it will be done. This definitely will be done in time for October and I feel like I'm just gonna wear it all month long in October and then after that as well too because Halloween doesn't stop in October for me. We've already started Halloween in my house, which I think is awkward for the kids because nobody else is dressing up or decorating. <laughs> I can't help it. We are. So, and they're excited about it too, so it's okay. Um, and then I forgot to mention, this is the Nightmare Before Christmas inspired Cardi by Alt Knots. I am using fingering weight held double, a lot of indie dyed yarn out of my stash from Nitty and Color, Schmutzarella Yarns, and Cattails Yarns. And then the black is Shopple Wool Bio Merinos, which is a 95% merino, 5% linen blend that has this awesome, like these flecks of white. I believe that's the linen content. And I think it adds like this super grungy look to the, the whole sweater overall. It, it definitely gives it a different look than had I used a solid black. Let me just show you the yarn. Yeah. I love the way this yarn looks. It is a single ply yarn and it is actually a sport weight. So that does change the gauge. The any dyed yarns are fingering weight held double. This sport held double modifies things a bit, but I've been adjusting and making it work. I have mentioned on previous episodes that Kayla's patterns are uh, like recipe style. So you, it's really easy to modify them because they're based on your measurements and not your gauge. So you can use any yarn, any gauge and fit it to you. So yeah. Another project I've been working on is a second sample for my simple asymmetric mohair shawl. It is the sample that I started crocheting in the tutorial and it's giving me super mermaid vibes. So this is Happy Sheep Magic Sock Wool and it's, I'm getting into these purples and these blues and there are, there is like a magenta that runs through it. 
I've got that on the shawl here. It's toned down because I'm holding it with a strand of Hobie Kid Silk, this blue. And I just think that overall, this is gonna make a really lovely blue gradient shawl. I'm super excited to see this pattern worked up in something that is so different than the original. So this is a free pattern that I have a video tutorial and a free PDF I'll have. It linked below it's just a super fun quick pattern I like taking this one on the go I can work on it while I am talking watching the kids play soccer it's one that's pretty easy to have as a social project so that is something else that I've been working on. I've also been working on making a wind spinner. So this is so close to done, but it's still a work in progress because it's missing its piece on the bottom. So this is a, I think the pattern's $2.99 or there is a video tutorial on how to make this by Ophelia Talks. I'll have it linked down below. And she uses a tassel for weight at the bottom of her wind spinner, but I have been talking with my kids about our Halloween decorations this year and we, they, uh, have been obsessed with Minecraft. So we have decided to do a Minecraft Halloween front yard decoration. So I'm going to be adding a Minecraft skeleton to the bottom of this wind spinner for my daughter. So here's how it's looking. And it's, I did a, I chained 100 for the length and then I'm just using scrap acrylic for all of it. I've got a silver, a gray, a black sparkle, and then I use that silver again on the outside. This is Emily's choice. So she picked out the colors. She picked out the idea for the skeleton. I'm just making a tiny amigurumi style skeleton that I'm going to attach to the bottom. And then I will additionally be making the glow pumpkin for myself, an enderman for my son, and then also a creeper because creeper, Minecraft. <laughs> so this is really fun to make too. It's kind of mindless. Your rows get pretty long just because of the nature of the way you create this. So it's it's just kind of a it's kind of like making a blanket, but it's so much faster because it's not nearly as many rows. It's just basic and quick and here you go. And I think I've got a on my front porch has got like a covered area and I'm just going to hang them along. I think it's going to look so cool once they're all done. I'll definitely take a video and show it off when we've got everything decorated and put together. So that is another project I've been working on. And then my final work in progress is something that I just shared on this last Saturday's live stream. That's when I did the live yarn review of Lion Brand Vanna's Choice. So if you've seen my Lion Brand Mystery Box unboxing, then you know that I challenged myself to design something with everything in the box and I have been successful. Those designs are not all completely done, but they're very far in progress. And one of them is done, that cowl, uh, but I'm also doing a hat to go with that one. Uh, but it's, I mean, I can't pop out a pattern every week, but I can make really good progress on a pattern a week. So this is, does not have a name yet. This, I've been calling it Annie's overalls dress because it is an overalls dress for my daughter, Annie. So this is Lion Brand's Vanna's Choice, and I've got the, it actually goes this way. There is the front, here's the back. We just need straps to go over the shoulders. And then this is the skirt part. It's got this super cute cutout on the sides and it's super ruffly. I've just got a couple more rows before I start the border that's gonna match this texture here and then it will be all done. I'm making this in the two size and this pattern is gonna be graded from size two up to size 12. I want to make one for my other daughter, Emily, who is six, but using a different material to see how the drape changes from acrylic to something with like kobu maybe, you know, like a bamboo cotton blend where there's a lot more drape to it and it's more like a swinging overall dress versus this stiffer, fluffy baby dress. So this has been a really fun to design. I've got my spreadsheet here. I just drew a schematic and then I used that schematic to 
do the proportions and the math based on the size measurements I wanted it to fit to create this worksheet. And this is the pattern for now until it's completed and I can type it up into the form that you guys are used to receiving patterns in. So yeah, those are all of my works in progress. So that brings me to check it out. You guys, I received the sweetest gift. Look at this. My dad's coworker made me a yarn bowl. This is so cute and so sweet. He's got his little stamp in the bottom here. So he took some pottery classes and he knew that I'm really into working with yarn and so he went ahead and made this for me. This is my only my second ever ceramic yarn bowl. My first one was gifted to me by um, the kids' grandma and now this one also gifted to me. I love it so much. And it's even more special because it was made with m me in mind. I just think he did such a great job. I mean, you can tell that he's a beginner potter, but this is still super functional. And that handmade look makes it even more special. This is the only one like it. No other yarn bowl is like this one. It's just for me. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I super appreciated that he did that for me. And then the other thing that I wanted to share is my other merch came in. Check out the Lift Your Spirits shirt. It turned out so good. So this is Lift Your Spirits with crochet. And, um, I ended up going with the Tri Blend unisex option. So I'm wearing a size small. I love the way it fits. It's nice and cool and breathable and thin. I'm super pleased with the way that it turned out. So if you want your own Lift Your Spirits tea, I will leave a link to the merch shop. Um, but I'm also gonna be giving away some merch for, for the crochet along as well. So speaking of the crochet along, it starts next well, this Friday, actually, this will go out, this video will go out on Monday. So this Friday, the first clue comes out. And then this Saturday will be the first kickoff live stream. I'm going to be hosting Nancy of Schmutzarella Yarns. We're going to do kind of an interview style live stream. And then we're going to be giving away some of her yarn. So you're going to want to make sure you show up for that live stream so you or even catch it in the replay so that you can be entered for the chance to win some of her luxurious fandom nerdy yarn uh oh also i don't think i shared off the bag the bag came in too so i think on my last episode i showed the mug here is the tote bag which i think turned out so good too it's a nice large bag i've been keeping my asymmetric shawl in here and for this sample, I went with the organic tote bag. So it's, where is it, right here? This is the e-conscious e 100% organic cotton made in Vietnam machine wash cold, do not bleach, tumble dry bag. So yeah, I am so excited for this crochet along, you guys. I cannot wait. For you to start seeing the pattern. I think you guys are going to lose your minds. I know that if I was on the receiving end of this pattern, I would be like, oh, what is this? This is the best thing ever. So <laughs> I cannot wait. Um, so I have my Facebook group for the crochet along where you can share spoilers. And then I'm also hoping to be able to share those spoiler photos in the future live streams as we, as they're coming along. But yeah, I'm so excited, I'm all lost about where I'm at. So, <laughs> yes, I think I was just basically saying the mystery crochet along starts this Friday, first clue comes out Friday, and then there is the live stream kickoff Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time, which is 12 p.m. Eastern time. So yeah, I'm super pumped for that. Other than that, that takes me to Let's Chat, which I was blown away when I saw that I just passed my eighth year of being on YouTube. So about this time, eight years ago, I uploaded Mando Bug Crafts episode one. Hello, and welcome to Mando Bugs Crafts very first episode. Not gonna lie, it's pretty cringeworthy, but you know, it's just one of those things where if this is what you want to do, you just got to start and you got to start somewhere. I am so happy that my very first episode was 
in a pumpkin shirt being like, I love Halloween. That's something you'll learn about me. I mean, look at my shirt. <laughs> I love Halloween. And I'm sure it will refre reflect in my projects, which you'll see later. Not much has changed. <laughs> Eight year ago, baby Mandobug has learned so much since I started making this podcast and sharing it on YouTube. It is unbelievable. I think a quick skip around recap would say I started the podcast. I learned to knit. I released my first crochet pattern. I had my first baby, my second baby. I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast and went from being a full-time employee uh, to a stay-at-home mom. Uh, then I moved into my own place, which is where I live now. Not too many years after that, I ended up getting divorced. And so then I was a single mom with just my first two children. And then more recently, well, and then, then yeah, I also worked, I started working at a local yarn store where I was briefly the assistant manager for a while. And then once COVID hit, I came to stay home. I met my amazing partner, David, and we now have a child together and now, going forward, my first magazine design that is going to be published in a magazine is coming out in just a couple weeks. And, I mean, you're pretty much caught up to speed from there with where I'm at, but I've just had such, so much change in my life, which is why I've it's been eight years. I took like two years off of recording uh, podcast episodes because things were pretty rough when I was going through working full-time and then when I went through my divorce it really took away from personal time like making these episodes and it took a while for my life to get back into a balance where I can do the things that I love like design crochet patterns and make these videos and yeah, so it's been, wow, it's been quite a journey and I thank you guys for being here with me along the way. Uh, so yeah, Mando Bug Crafts, eight year anniversary. Other than that, all I wanted to talk about for Let's Chat is my kids were in soccer and we were doing that two times a week. That just recently ended and school is about to start. So they, my two older kids are going to be in school full time and then it's just me and the baby. So I'm actually going to be hiring some help so that I can work a couple days a week without any interruptions from children. I'm super excited about this. This is going to allow me to create more videos and create more patterns at, at a, at a more uh, regular speed than in the past where this has been very much a part time thing for me. I'm trying to bring it into a more full-time position. So I'm very excited about that. So hopefully you'll be seeing more videos and more patterns from me soon. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about for this episode. Until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye.